Some people grow up scared of ghosts and monsters. And all of us probably can remember like a time when we slept with the lights on or slept at the foot of our parents' beds, you know, scared of a nightmare somewhere we had. But in some of us who grew up, you know, not just scared of the things that go bump in the night, but the things that go bang in the night. The streets, streets are notorious for drugs, and prostitution, gangs, crooked cops and politicians, anything you could think of, schemes, anything to make a dollar or anything to hurt somebody. Tonight, we got a guest who says that he had an experience in the streets that scared him away from the streets, it scared him away forever. Tonight, we hear his story. I had, uh, you know, I really don't tell no whole lot of people this story because folk really don't be believing me. So I really don't tell no whole lot of people, but I'm going to tell y'all because um, my man said this to this the place to come when you, you know, because in the streets, you can't tell nobody no stuff like this. They think you're stupid, man. They think it too, you know, you just can't, you know, you can't. Like, you, you know, sometimes y'all be chilling. You might, you know, spark up a little conversation that kind of out there, you know, but uh, just on the usual basis, you know, folk going, ain't nobody going to take you serious or even care to hear what you got to say. So I'm going to tell y'all and, you know, and hey, if you believe me, you do. If you don't, then you don't. If you got, you know, if you got something you can tell me, let me know because this, this mess with me to this day, man. I haven't been, like, folk asked me for years, like, you know, when you gonna come home? When you gonna come home? Like, I'm talking about, I ain't been back through and, like, since this happened, I ain't, you know, I moved out to the suburb and I don't never go back to the streets. I don't never go back. And, um, you know, folk think I'm just acting funny or I cut everybody out, but I'm just too scared, man. So what happened was, um, okay, I used to drive for this guy, this this delivery, yeah, like the delivery company. And uh, I drive overnight and I pick up from their warehouse and there'd be some boxes. And, then, you know, I never knew what was up in there, but I figured it was drugs or some drug paraphernalia or whatever because, you know, they never, they was always secretive about what it was, and none of the businesses I go to ever had, like, names on it, and it was, it was just, you could tell something funny was going on, but I ain't never asked no questions, because they were paying me good money to do it, so, um, and you know, the money was under the table and all that, so I ain't have to worry about no taxes and all that stuff, I was young, man, I'm happy to be getting money like that, you know, you can't, I always get no bread like that. And my uncle, he the one who put me on. And he told me, hey, just do what you're supposed to do. Shut up. You know, do what you're supposed to do. Shut up. Come home. Get paid. Now, they gave me the little pistol and stuff. And, you know, uh, back in the, that time, you couldn't get no pistol. And, uh, you know, you couldn't get no pistol uh, when you got little things on your record, man. So... You know, you still can't, I guess, you know, but uh, I had a little something on my record, you know, nothing major, but I had a little, little, little weed charge and stuff, so I couldn't get one, but they gave me one, so that's how I really knew, like, you know, this must be some, you know, there's some, there's some stuff on me, man, so, you know, I always be smooth, I never, you know, do nothing wrong or nothing, never, you know, run no lights or nothing, because I ain't want to, you know, get in trouble, get pulled over and the cops see what I got on me, and, you know, so... You know, I just made my drops and kept my mouth shut, you know. And uh, now when they gave me the gun, they told me no matter what, don't let nobody steal my packages, man. And if I got to run, then run. But if I got to shoot, then shoot. But make sure I don't lose them boxes. I better take them boxes with me if I got to run. So I'm just cruising and listening, you know, to the radio station. And I'm listening to that late night R&B soul station, you know, and I'm just chilling. Now, all of a sudden, this old box Chevy. Now, y'all know, you know, the old Chevy Caprice, the box Chevy, man, you know, um, 
the old box Chevy come by. <sighs> mother flew by. Like that mother was moving, man. And uh, you know, I'm doing like, you know, what's the speed limit? Like 65 or something. So I'm doing like 65. That thing going by it hit be doing a hundred. Now, when that mother went back, it scared the dog mess out of me. You know, I'm just sitting there chilling. Then all of a sudden, phew, so, you know, I set up real quick, man. And I started, you know, looking behind me because, you know, I'm figuring the cops must be, you know, they must have some cops or something up under there and they moving like that. So, um, you know, a few minutes went by. And, um, you know, I ain't seen no police and I just kind of started back relaxing and I seen the car again and I'm looking at the car and I'm catching up to it real quick because it's just barely moving. Like we on the expressway, we on the thing and the thing just, he just rolling. Like, you know how the car just roll when you don't be pressing the accelerator, it just be rolling on its own. So the car just like rolling. Now, when I go by, I ain't look too hard because... You know, I figured some young boys and they on dummy or something, and I ain't need them messing with me, man. So when I see them young boys doing something, I just keep it moving, man. So I peek, you know, by, but I, you know, I kind of tried to peek a little bit, but I, you know, I just kept it going, and then they was in between street lights, so I couldn't make nobody out. So I'm cruising about a mile down the road, and I keep looking back in my rear view. And I'm low-key kind of worried because, you know, I ain't no real, like, gangster type guy, man. You know, I'm just, I'm just an everyday type of guy. And I got this gun because they gave it to me. But the last thing I'm trying to do is have to use that mug. So then I see some headlights way back. And the first thing come to my mind is, it's that Chevy. So I head for the exit thinking, I'm going to just let them pass me because uh, I just had that feeling, man, you know. So I go for the exit and pull off to the side and I turn my lights off and stuff. And a few seconds go by and I see that Chevy just glad cruise on by, man. Now I'm glad I was thinking quick because, you know, I just knew like if them boys, you know, they 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 obviously finna do something. They ain't just out here. They out here. You, if somebody go from 100 to zero on the expressway, you know, like you up, you just, you, you looking for something stupid to do, man. I can see going from zero to a hundred, but a hundred to zero, you know, that ain't, that ain't normal, man. So, um, you know, I got back on the road and I took the ramp back onto the E-way and I realized in my mirror that the Chevy was parked up under the bridge sitting there waiting for me. So he never went past the exit. He just went past the ramp and stopped up under the bridge. So when I got, went down the ramp, he was sitting there behind me just waiting. And um, so I stopped right there in the middle of the ramp and I started wondering like, dang, what should I do? Cause I just, you know, it just didn't click to me. I need to, you know, keep driving and I don't need to be looking at what they doing. I need to keep playing, play dumb. Like, I don't know, okay, I see you, but I'm moving. So that way they know, hey, you know, I see you, you know, like in the streets, always, you know, was taught to give people eye contact but don't stare them down, you know. Like, you can look at them just to let them know, hey, I see you. Don't try nothing. <laughs> you know, don't try nothing now, sorry. You know, you try something, I'm, I'm, I see you now, but don't look them down because you staring them down. It's like, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at you, what? You know, so, so you know, I just do a little bit now, you know. I just knew, just hit that bit and go ahead and get on about my way. Now, as soon as I pick up speed, they pick up speed. And my heart started, boop, 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 heart finna bust up out my chest. I told you, I ain't no gangster, gangster. I'm scared, man. So my little car wasn't no match for this Chevy, man. That mug must have had that Corvette engine swap or something in it, man. It was pulling like crazy. They had to, like, put that 5.7 or something in it, man. That mug was pulling. So he right up behind me and, like, you know, just like that, he right behind me. Now, I thought about, like, slamming on the brakes or something, and, and then I thought about it. That mug he driving made out of real steel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That thing, I'm in, I'm in just a little dang, uh, you know, one of them early 2000 cars, man. You know, that junk ain't made out of nothing but plastic and fiberglass and aluminum and stuff. He His junk made out of dang titanium, man. So I'm like, I ain't finna try to, you know, be bully him. I'm going you know, keep it moving. He could bash my car and kill me and keep going and he won't have a dang dent on his car. So, uh, 
you know, usually I'm hoping I don't see no cops, but right now I'm like, bro, please, a cop somewhere. I need some police bed. I need popo bed, you know. So, um, you know, so I'm, 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 I'm moving. I'm moving. And I, when I would try to get over and get off on one of the exits, they'd speed up and force me back onto the road. And they pulled up to my right, and I finally got a decent look in the car. There was about five or six people in there. And I couldn't make out no faces or nothing, but I could see, you know, the shapes of them. So I already knew what time it was. Like, you know, I already knew that, you know, this this is this is it. Now, maybe they wanted to scare me. You know, they just high off some and bored. But I felt like this was something worse. You know, I felt like uh, they had something worse on their mind. You know, like they... They was after some blood, you know. So I pulled a Vin Diesel move, boy. Slammed on the brakes. And uh, got behind him real quick and drove it over to the shoulder, you know. Then I put, uh, I got up and drove through the grass and drove straight through this fence, man. That's how desperate I was. Drove straight through the fence and got onto the street. And I don't know what the Chevy did because at the angle I was at, I couldn't really see it no more. But I figured they just call it a night and say, go mess with somebody else or something, because obviously this guy ain't going. You know? Now, I thought about going to the police, but like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure I was moving some dope, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I ain't want, you know, one of them little pooches up there at the station to get to sniffing around my car or nothing, you know. So I felt good, you know. I said, I'm probably straight. I went a few blocks, you know, with zigzag and stuff, just to make sure they couldn't follow me, man. Then I, um, you know, then my dang car stopped. Now, my car stopped because I was out of gas. I looked down, I seen the gas needle. That mud just wasn't on E. It was down up under the E, like a whole whole dang fingertip. I could have fit my fingertip between the the E and the, the, the needle. Man. That mug was down, down, man. And that's my old so I'm so sorry, man. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I done got a little better, but I, I, I was a sorry guy, man. Like, man, I, I'm talking about, I had, like, I get paid, and I know I gotta drive all week long. But I'll go and put like 5 or $10 at a time in a tank instead of just filling it up. And, you know, I know I got to drive again the next day. I know I'm driving every day, but I can't put no more than 5 $10 in that tank, man. I just can't, I, you know, I don't even know what it's like to fill up the gas tank. <laughs> you know, shoot, I ain't never filled up no whole tank. I don't even know what that's like. And uh, that's just one of them old bad hood habits, man. It's look, I, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know you you don't put no more than five, ten dollars in your maybe twenty, maybe if you just got like your income taxes, you might put twenty in there. But other than that, it's five for ten for the win, and you already know. So, um, but I paid for it that night, bro. I paid for it that night. And I guess I didn't notice when the thing was beeping because I'm driving so fast and scared and all that. So I ain't even realizing that I'm driving so hard and fast. You know, I, I guess that just really killed the tank. Now, I was in this like factory type area and stuff. There was a few little houses and stuff scattered here and there, but it was mostly like a little factory type area. And everything was run down. And even the factories that kind of looked decent, they was all closed for the night. And I don't know where I was, but I had to find some gas, man. Yeah, so I'm like, man, I need to, you know, really think this through. Because if I leave this car, it'd be just my luck that some kind of dang Jay would come by. And, and, and you know, Jay mean junkie, you know, Jay for junkie, you know, crackhead, whatever you want to call him. he come by and be and grab all my stuff. So I called my, um, you know, I called my ball man and all that. And, uh, you know, he re he he usually get mad real quick, you know, when stuff ain't right or whatever. But he was real understanding when I told him the whole story. And he told me to figure out where I was and let him know. Now, this was before Google Maps. So, um, and, you know, I had like a flip phone and stuff, man. So, you know, I walked down a bit to see the street signs. And, of course, somebody had knocked them off. You know, or whatever, man. Folks just bored kids or so, you know. So I turned back and I went down the block the other way. 
No street signs down that way. So I turn down to the next street to see what that sign say. And I hear a, 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 a low rumble from down the block. Now, you know it when you hear an old car with them old flow masses and stuff on it. And then, you know, with them with, with them cars old, like real, when they get past real old, you know, you, can, you ain't got to do emissions. So you can take the dang pipes completely off the car. So... That mud was so loud, man. I just heard it rumbling from it. Like, it sounded like a couple, might have been about two blocks away. That's how loud it was. Real, you know, I hear it real, coming real slow. And I look way down and I see the lights. So now I run and I go get up in a, you know, in a little cut somewhere. And I'm just hiding out in a little, in a little cut off, man. Now it pulled up to my car and turned the high beams on. And it looked, and, um, and I'm just there like, man, I hope they thinking I just abandoned the car and, and, and got up out of there or whatever, man. Now, I heard the doors open and one of them got out to check the car, I guess to make sure I wasn't hiding in the back seat or nothing. So he went and got back in the driver's seat and started revving the engine. Then they started creeping down the block, coming towards the way I was at, and I tried my best to hide, man. And when the car got to where I was, it slowed down a bit, and this is where I just went complete brain dead and just froze up. And I was so froze that, like, when I recovered, I seen I was drooling. Like, that's how, that's how, that's how froze I was. I was completely just like a. a, a like a, a dang a, a, a dummy, the, the thing they put the clothes on in the mall. I was one of them clothes things they put the mall. <laughs> Look, I was I was froze. Okay, I, I ain't even gotta come. I was froze. Now, the car went by, like they they was look, but they went on and went by. And when they went by, I kind of unfroze and <sighs> let out this <sighs> big old sign, man. And as soon as I did that, man, the driver put that thing in reverse. And I heard, man, through that mud. And I ain't never ran like that before. But it ain't do no good because I didn't run on the main street because, you know, of course, there ain't nowhere to hide. So I went through this thing between the two buildings. This little, little, little alley type thing or whatever, man. So now when I'm going down there, I'm going between the buildings. He come in. And of course, I'm just looking for a door or everything locked. So now he right up on my tail, bro. Like, he just literally, like, as I'm running and my feet kicking back, is hitting the, the dang bumper of the car. So, you know, he got it one more time. And I kind of jumped because I, I knew that was like the one that was going to like run me over. So I jumped up and I landed on the hood of the car and I turned and flipped around real quick so I could, you know, and I was holding on to the edge of the hood or whatever. Right by the windshield, man. And I looked into the car. So I'm just holding on. I'm looking like this and look, you can believe me or you can think I'm lying. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care because... This what I saw. So now look, it was six kids in there. They was about 18, 19, you know, young. And that same thing, I was about 18, 19, whatever at the time too. It's my age. Five guys and one girl. But they didn't look like me though. You know, they had them them high top fades, you know, like on them on them kid and play movies they had like the high top fade and um and their clothes was like fitted you know like at the time everybody wore loose clothes like early 2000 we were wearing loose jeans and, and big old t-shirts and stuff all down to your knee you know they were a little different man and uh and, uh, and they had only big old chains like you know big gold ropes and you know, big old stuff, man. You know, like like on some real run DMC type, you know, stuff, man. And um, and um, you know, and and the girl, she was like, she looked like like my mama old high school album pictures, man. You know that, and uh, it, it was crazy. Her hairstyle was like, you know, that little that little 
you know, that little doo-wop, the little, little shorty doo-wop thing, you know, the girls wore then, man. And um, they was legit from the 80s. Like, they was legit all dressed like they were straight up out the 80s, man. Like, they was on their way to 80s day at school or something. But that ain't the worst part. That ain't the craziest part. The craziest part is the holes. These kids had bloody holes all up over them. Bullet holes. Like, it was like bullet holes. Bloody, bloody, blood soaked bullet holes. And this one no makeup. This one no. This one no prank, man. Uh, you can't use makeup to put a, a, a dang hole in your face. You know, you can't use makeup to, to wipe all this out. It don't, you know, it's just don't. Yeah, if you're using the, the camera tricks, the, what you call it, the the, the, the CSI, C, C, C whatever I, if you're using that, then yeah, but no, nah, you can't do that junk in person. Like, I seen it. These was holes, legit holes in these kids. All over. All over. And, um... And they laugh. As toe up as they was, as bad as they looked, covered in them whole bullet holes like that, they was laughing. Like, laughing at me and hanging up. So finally, he get to like a, like, um, to what you call it, man. They had like, started, um, like, you know, you get to like a dead end. He got to a dead end. And at the dead end of the thing, because the fence was up and the fence had like barbed wire up on it. So they get out the car and I'm just standing there. I, I jump up off the hood real quick and I'm just standing back, you know, my back against the fence, man, looking crazy. And they all walk around and start congratulating me, like, you know, and they patting me in, getting their blood and guts and brains and stuff. These kids, hundreds of holes in these kids, man. Like, somebody took the, bro, somebody took the, 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 the dang chopper and put it on them, man. Like, for real, it had to be like some, some dang mafia movie type stuff, man. And they came and, um, uh, and, you know, they congratulate him. One of them, he said, yeah, I think he ready to ride these roads. I like him. And they agreed with him all except for one of them, the tallest and biggest one. And the one he was shot up the most. Like, you can tell, like, whoever shot these kids up, they really was after him. They might have got the other ones, but he was the one that they really, like, was had the beef with. He was too toe up, man. You can't even... He was told up. So he came and he walked up to me and he had a big old hand like baseball mitt and that big old hand, man. He wrapped that mug around my neck. And he said, he kind of like took me and leaned me side to side and looked me right in my eye straight up and grew kind of like that. And he just went like, nah, he ain't ready. But I tell him one thing. And he, man, look. He, one of his eyes was missing. And the other one was half missing. But I could tell he would look at me right in my eye. And he told me, don't you ever let me catch you on my streets again. Straight up like that. The rest of them didn't say a word. They got quiet. They didn't disagree. And they all went and got back up in the car. Now, once the car, you know, he started the car up and he started backing up. And as he backed up out of that, that dead end, he never took his eyes off of me. He watched me the whole time he backed that car up and never, never looked, never, I don't, you know, he, he watched me the whole time. And uh, eventually, when I kind of, you know, snapped back up out of it, uh, you know, I picked up my phone and called my boss, man. And I told him that he going to have to come get his drugs. And uh, I played stupid long enough. And his job was sending me down the road that 
I just don't then it couldn't couldn't keep driving down. Let this be a lesson to all of y'all out there. Even if you don't believe the story, to always remember the street life is a one-way street that leads to a dead end. And when you try to turn around and go back, the other drivers will try their hardest to run you down. Until next time.